last class right today we are going to discuss about indian payment systems what we are going to discuss indian payment system see in india we can see two types of payment systems one is retail payments means the limited means the am amount is below 50,000, 50, 1 lakh or 10,000, 5,000, 10 rupees, 100 rupees, all these comes under retail payments and large value payments. Large value means if the amount is in lakhs, amount is in crores, they are called as large value systems, right? So in retail payments, we have two. One is paper-based, another one is electronic. Paper based is nothing but like check. So here we are using the two technologies. One is MICR CTS. So magnetic ink character recognizing system and check truncation system. So these are the systems we are using under paper based. And if you come to electronic for retail payments, we have ECS, electronic clearing system eft electronic fund transfer and neft national electronic fund transfer system these we are using for retail payments means the banks use this technology to settle the payments between the banks right between the customer bank between the merchant bank merchant bank to customer bank customer bank to merchant bank to make the settlement system they are used this type of technologies for retail payments means small payments if you come to large payments, high value payments, so paper based, it is check system and another one is RTGS, real time growth settlement system. So this we are using in India. If you come to abroad, we are using SWIFT technology. So if you want to transfer the money from one country bank to another country bank, for example, we are having a bank account in India, we want to transfer money to other person who is staying in US. So to transfer to make the type of transfers, the banks are depending on SWIFT technology. So these are the different settlement systems are followed by the banks. So this is what banks perspective means what type of technologies they are using to settle the funds. So we need to discuss these one by one. See here. First, we will discuss for NEFT. What do you mean by NEFT? N-E-F-T. National Electronic Fund Transfer. It is an electronic fund transfer system which facilitates transfer of funds to other banks across the country. This is a simple, secure, safe, fastest, and cost-effective way to transfer funds, especially for retail remittance. So if you want to transfer the funds, for example, I want to use NEFT. So if you want to use NEFT, we need some mandatory things. That is IFSC. For example, I'm transferring to one account uh, who is having a bank account in some bank like uh, IOB. Then we need that branch IFSC, Indian Financial System Code. For every branch, for every bank, we have a code. That code is nothing but a unique code for every bank branch that code is called IFSC code and full account number of the beneficiary to whom we are transferring so his account number is required I name of the beneficiary so on which name he has account number that details we require and when you go for NEFT it has certain timings so in that time only we can make the transaction see customer can use this facility between 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. means morning 8 a.m. to 6.30 we can transfer the money in weekdays and uh, on Saturday it is 8 a.m. to 6.30 so you can avail this facility you can avail this facility through your net banking or through bank branch so in bank you have a form net to form so you need to fill that net net to form then you can transfer the money. So this is what NIFT, National Electronic Fund Transfer means how the transaction will take the place in bank point of view. So every day they will collect number of uh, NIFT forms. For example, uh, I'm a customer of SBI. I need to transfer money to 
some union bank what i need to do so my merchant is having a sub my supplier is having a bank account in union bank now i need to transfer 5 lakhs rupees to whom sorry uh, some 1 lakh rupees to my union bank merchant means the mer my merchant is having a bank account in union bank so to him i want to transfer 1 lakh rupees then what i did i filled a net form and i submitted that form to my branch or electronically i did this transaction means i mentioned the recipient means my merchant account number his bank ifsc code all the details i fill and i given a submit option then what happens so similarly uh, another person he is having his account in union bank he need to transfer some uh, 3 lakh rupees what he need to do he need to transfer 3 lakh rupees to sbi bank means one person who is having a account in sbi to whom he need to transfer 3 lakh rupees so what he has submitted the details to the union bank through net so finally what happens at the day end time or at the ending time what happens so sbi has to transfer 1 lakh to union bank union bank has to transfer 3 lakh rupees to sbi then what they will do they will take what the net amount means the net amount means they will take they will transfer the union bank will transfer only 2 lakh rupees to the sbi and 1 1 lakh transfer, transaction is a mutual owing so that type of transactions happens in net so that is what national electronic fund transfer means they they will do the transaction on net basis right so now we have another one that is rtgs what we have rtgs so this is for large value so real time gross settlement what we can call real time gross settlement what it mean what do you mean by real time gross settlement let us see see the real time gross settlement introduced by as a union bull bullet it is a fastest possible mode of money transfer through a bank challenge available in india it is a fund transfer mechanism where transfer of money takes place from one bank to another in real time on gross basis presently there are over 50000 bank branches enabled for remitting and receiving funds through rtgs rtgs primarily for large transaction the minimum amount to be remitted through rtgs is 2 lakhs rupees means without linking to other transactions if you want to transfer the amount immediately without delay without bunch of other transactions without including other transactions you can go for rtgs it is real time settlement it it not linked to other transactions directly the amount transfer from one bank account to another bank account without any interlink transactions means they won't go for net basis they will go for gross basis so for to do the rtgs also we need ifsc code full account number of the beneficiary and name of the beneficiary so this is what rtgs what we can say real time gross settlement system so what we can say real time gross settlement system so nowadays all the banks means the companies to transfer the huge amounts they are using this real time gross settlement so there is a minimum limit of 2 lakhs and there is no upper ceiling upper limit for rtgs so how rtgs is different from neft i said for small amounts we are going for neft and it does the transaction on net, uh, net basis whereas rtgs is without the linking to others the settlement will be done that is rtgs see neft is a electronic fund transfer system that operates on a deferred net settlement basis which settles transaction in batches so a bunch of the transaction will occur place in neft but whereas rtgs no bunch of transaction only one transaction it is transaction based right now we have to discuss about cds here we have different terms ma that all we need to discuss now cds what do you mean by cds 
the full form of cts is check truncation system what check truncation system or we can say image based clearing system what we can say image based clearing system in india it is a project undertaken by reserve bank of india in 2008 for faster clearing of checks so to clear the checks very speedily so the bank is the reserve bank is implemented cts check truncation system check truncation system is based on the check truncation or online image based system clearing system where check images and magnetic ink character recognize micr see if you find a check on check you can see a code that is called micr code so in cts the banks will use to clear the to make the settlement they will use micr as well as the images that are captured at the collecting bank branch and transmitted electronically for example i have a check i am issuing a check to a person so the person is having bank account in punjab national bank i am giving a check of sbi means i have a bank account in sbi i am issuing i am issuing sbi check to him to make a payment of some 1 lakh rupees or so and so amount then what he will do so he will remit he will deposit that check in Punjab National Bank. So what happens? So in traditional days, what system we have? The Punjab National Bank has to submit that check to the SBI. Then SBI will make the clearance. But nowadays, no need of that system. So whatever the check issued by me, that check contains MICR and image capturing, some images. So what they will do? They will insert that check in a check clearing machine. So that scanner will capture MICR, magnetic ink character recognizer, as well as some Im images. So that images will be transmitted over the internet to SBI. Then electronically, SBI will give the clearance to this Punjab National Bank. Then automatically, the amount deducted from the SBI bank and deposited into Punjab National Bank, my merchant account. So this happens in MP, MICR and CTS. Is it clear? Then EFT. EFT stands for electronic fund transfer system. So these are the systems we have in Indian payment systems. Is my screen is moving, Ma? Yeah, anybody can respond. Is my screen is moving? No, sir. No? No, have you seen 2010, 2020, 2020? Sir. It is showing only Indian payment status. Okay. Now, have you seen Ma? Are you enabled? Yes, sir. Are you able yes, to sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. See, Ma, if you go for 2010, we have only some systems, the payment systems like RTGS, ECS, NEFT, MICR, and cards like debit card credit card these things we have to make payments electronically and these are authenticated by rbi these are regulated by rbi and npci national payment corporation of india and other banks these are regulated by these corporations these come these organizations but if you come to 2020 we have so many payment systems like rtg so rtgs we have in 2010 we have rtgs now we are using rtgs apart to rtgs we have natch imps upi netc bbps rupee cards and ppi so cards we have earlier these cards nt rtgs neft okay these all we have earlier but nowadays we are using new technologies like upi IMPS immediate payment service and uh, rupee cards we have rupee cards so these we will discuss now so if you come to customer perspective what type of facilities see these are settlement systems now. these are cash settlement system between the banks transaction settlement systems between the banks but if you come to customer point of view so if a recipient means what type of payment systems Nowadays, the persons, the consumers are using. 
one is bank cards what more one is bank cards you know bank card like debit card credit card smart card some complementary cards okay some complement for example when you are doing work over time in your uh, company they may give some cards that cards we may use for shopping uh, like in shopping malls uh, like spencer reliance there we can use these cards they are called complementary cards so that banking cards usdd so uh, this is a one of the payment uh, technology the persons who are not having gprs technology web technology in their mobiles by using interactive system they can use ussd then aadhar enabled payment system we can call as aeps then upi unified payment system interface mobile wallets like gpay phone pay google pay and bank prepaid cards like debit cards point of sale terminals there we are swiping our cards and we are using internet banking mobile banking bharat interface for money transfer it is a app which is developed by indian government these are the payment systems we are using these are popular payment system bank card ussd aadhar enabled payment system upi mobile wallets bank prepaid cards point of sale internet banking mobile banking bharat interface for money so here we'll discuss i'll show some we know banking cards like debit card credit card and we have to focus on ussd so what is ussd so here so by using ussd like it is a interactive system what it is it is a interactive system by typing numbers in your dial pad we can go for banking transactions that is what ussd so mobile banking service for mobile banking service for financial and non financial transactions that we can do by using ussd here we need to use star 99 ash so this code this type we need in dial pad for example the phones which are not having gprs internet technologies for featured phone we can call as featured phone in that featured phone if you want to make a financial transaction so we need our non financial transaction means knowing the bank balances knowing the details so for that also we can use this ussd and mobile number is must link with bank account so only we can perform whose mobile number is linked to bank account in that mobile only we can perform the ussd operations the mobile phone on dsm network so compulsory it should be enabled with a sim card so what things we can perform through so, ussd so through prepaid phone also we can transfer the funds sir yeah 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 that is what ussd from keypad also yeah. you can transfer the funds yeah okay sir. Please, first time i am listening this sir yeah through keypad also you can go for transactions means the phones which are not having so it is called unstructured supplementary service data what we can say unstructured supplementary service data ussd like uh, for offers uh, pre, uh, nowadays we are using apps ma to know the mobile offers to recharge to know the balance but uh, in uh, previous means 2 2 3 years back to know the balance we type the star 1 2 3 ash star triple 1 ash when you type like that you can get the response from the company from the service provider similarly to make the bank transactions we need to use star double line ash right so or else the bank will provide one particular ussd number through that number we can make the bank transactions so what type of transactions what type of services we may get through this ussd service one is fund transfer so fund transfer means we can transfer the fund from our accounts to recipient accounts and we can check the balance we can check the profile we, we can go for pending request we can make the transactions bill payments and uh, benefits so simplicity user required to dial short code available in 12 regional languages work without internet uses voice connectivity also so it is the service we can get by 24 by 7 365 days so these benefits we have with the ussd the next one is aadhar enabled service just a minute ma
So next one is Aadhaar enabled system. So Aadhaar enabled system means compulsory your mobile number has to link with your bank as well as Aadhaar card. So by giving our thumb impression, our biometric. Uh, generally, when you want to perform a transaction, we need to enter PIN number or we need to enter a OTP. But instead of doing that, by giving our biometric thumb impression, we can make the transaction. That is called Aadhaar enabled payment system. So that system, what we can do, we can go for balance inquiry. We can go for cash deposit. For example, if you want to deposit cash, so there are some centers, they are called as Aadhaar enabled centers. So by visiting to that center, by giving your thumb impression, you can go for deposits also, small deposits. And you can go for cash withdrawals. Like mobile number, nowadays by using UPI, we are transferring the funds from one mobile number to another mobile number. So now instead of using mobile number, by giving Aadhaar number also, means you can transfer the uh, money from one Aadhaar number to another Aadhaar number, but that Aadhaar number must be linked with the bank account as well as mobile phone. Then only we can perform the transaction and we can go for eKYC. KYC means know your customer. So that also we can perform by Aadhaar enabled payment systems. So these payment systems are available uh, at the service points means some people may start service points. Uh, they are called as Aadhaar enabled payment system. There we can perform this. To do this transaction, we need a biometric device. So this is provided by the service points like SBI is offering SBI service points. So many banks are offering these services. In post office also we have this, this service. See how it works. Seema. See, first the beneficiary who want to make a transaction, he has to visit micro ATM or banking correspondent, or we can say the service point. So in service point, what he need to do? So he need to provide his bank name, Aadhaar number and transaction to be done. What transaction he has to do? That details the beneficiary has to disclose to the banking correspondent or service provider. After giving that, he has to select the transaction. After selecting the transaction, he has to give his fingerprint on the scanner. Means by using in biometric device, he need to give his fingerprint impression. After giving fingerprint impression, the transaction will be successful. This is what Aadhaar enabled payment system. Right? What we can say Aadhaar enabled payment system, we can say AEPS. Now we have one more beam, Bharat interface for money, right? It is a app. So it is available in different forms. So beam is available through app. Beam is available through QR code. Beam is available through USSD. So what I said. So here beam app. So what is beam app? So Bharat interface for money. So it is developed by government of India. So it is for simple, easy and quick payment transactions using EPI. Uh, so here nowadays we are using Google Pay. We are using Phone Pay. We are using Mobiquick. We are using Amazon Pay. Like that we have different payment systems. They are the private systems. But the beam is authenticated system. It is the product of government, right? So whatever the things we can perform in that payment wallets, the same thing we can perform by using beam also. So it is simple, easy and quick payment transaction using UPI account to account payment instantly collect money using mobile number or payment address. So what services we can get in beam, we can send money, we can request money, scan and pay by using QR code and we can see the previous transaction. We can see the profile and it is fetched with the bank account. We can get the bank statement also. And what are the benefits we have by with Beam? Single app for sending and receiving money. So we are using only single app for receiving and sending money to a regional languages, single interface. See, if you go for other payment valid, 
it we, uh, they are of uh, that we can get in only english but these we can get in 12 regional languages qr code based payments also available means quick response code by using qr code also we can make the payments mobile number and vpa used for payments then monetary benefits of referral schemes we may get some schemes also like reward points and the service is available uh, 24 by 7 that is 365 days we can use this service this is what beam app and beam referral scheme see beam referral scheme means the scheme is introduced by government of india means by referring two or more persons we may get some incentives incentives means we may get some cash back we may get some amount so that is what beam referral screen so this is available nowadays all the wallets in google pay we have the same system in phone pay paytm whatever you may use so in every system we have referral system in that referral system you may earn money by referring means the person who is not using uh, these apps so by referring them we may get we may earn some money that is what referral system that referral system we have in every app now how beam works see if you go for any mobile wallet we have the welcome screen after that so here we have it uh, we need to link with the bank account so we need to link up this app with the bank account after linking the bank account to send the money uh, we have to click on send to receive the money we have to click on receive to make payment through a qr code we need to click on scan and pay like that we can perform the transactions right and here we have qr code also by using qr code also we can make the payments so this is called qr code mark nowadays most of the payments are occurring through qr code in shops we may see in front of the shop we may see this display qr code display simply by scanning this we can make the payments for every bank for every shop there is a unique qr code through that unique qr code we can make the payments Right. Slide is different, sir. Yeah. Slide is not moving, sir. One minute. Yeah. Now it is moving. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Have you seen this? Uh, this other enabled payment. Yes, ma'am. Have you seen this other enabled payment slide? Uh, yes, sir. Now I am seeing, sir. Previously, it is not visible. No, sir. I was uh, listening to you, sir. But the uh, slide was not seen, sir. Yeah. Now see, this is other enabled payment system. Huh? So in other enabled payment system, what happens? Uh, compulsory to make other enabled payment. Compulsory, the other card number must linked with your bank account, your phone number. Then only you can make the transaction. See, if you want to send money to a person, you know his, you don't know his account number, but you know his other number. Then what you need to do, you need to visit a micro ATM point, or we can say a service point. So the uh, service points like SBI service point, customer service point, or uh, Canara bank service point, like every bank is established is service points. So that service point, contains a micro ATM machines or we can say the swiping machine okay in this machine the correspondent may enter bank account number Aadhaar number okay and transaction to be done what type of transaction you are going to do if you don't know the bank number nothing else by entering other number also we can make the transaction so after entering the details we need to give our fingerprints what we need to provide we need to provide the fingerprints means for example we need to transfer we need to provide the fingerprint means we need to scan in biometric device so by giving the fingerprints the transaction will make successful this is the most secured way because there is a chance of hacking pin numbers otps but in this other enabled compulsory your presence is required so your thumbnail is required without that thumbnail without your biometric the transaction may not complete successfully right so it is like a mini bank cluster yeah yeah it is operated by private persons but they need to take the permission from the bank authorities
okay right are you able to see my screen mark qr code yes sir yes sir now nowadays most of the payments occurs through qr code only so previously we need to carry money right it is very difficult but nowadays what we are doing simply by opening our mobile camera or by opening any payment system app like g pay or phone pay or paytm simply there we have a option scan by scanning the qr code immediately we are transferring the money so here this is the demo of bharat qr code so we can use this qr code system to make the payments in hotels in shopping malls okay in e stores right uh, in toll plazas so wherever you go there we can make the payments by using qr codes right now in india we have so many payment apps ma so many payment apps to make the payments they are called as e wallets what we can call e wallets see these e wallets are linked with our bank account so whenever you make the transaction for example you are transferring the money from your to others then automatically your bank account balance will be deducted when you are getting money from others automatically your bank balance will be increased right this happens through this payment apps so here we have number of payments app these are the best payments apps which we are using in india gpay so it is called google pay master pass bim what i said now and pays app amazon pay mobi quick paytm phone pay yono sbi it is a yono uh, sbi product then packets it is a product of icici bank like that we, just i am showing only some number but we have so many wallets ma all these wallets are used to make the payments nowadays instead of using cards we are all are making payments through use through this payment apps only for example electricity bill utility bills credit card bill right movie tickets all we are performing through this and we have some benefits by using this also so we may get some referrals we may get some offers we may get some cashbacks so all that we can get by using this apps but the important thing is that when you are using these we have to insta when your phone is having like g pay paytm just you need to install trusted apps from the play store or ios stores otherwise the apps which are not trusted they may hack your information they may send your sensitive data to hackers for that reason when you are using mobile wallets in your mobile compulsory you need to use all trusted authentic apps don't download apps which are not in play store directly you don't install any apk files so android supporting files or ios supporting files then payment processors so here payment processor means they will make the settlements and they will act as a third parties to make the settlement see here payment processors are there SBI is a payment processor. ICICI Bank, Kotak, Axis Bank, Citi Bank, Bank of Baroda, IDBI Bank. They are called as payment processors. And we have gateways. For example, I started a e-commerce store. I need to get a payment system. Means I need to get funds from customer account to my account. At that situation, we need to take the support from payment gateways. So in India, we have so many payment gateways like CC Avenues. Google Checkout, Google Pay, Skrill, Bill Desk, uh, Authorize Net, EBS, Sage Pay, Transcute, India Pay. These are the various payment gateways. So they will act as a mediator between merchant bank, customer bank, and authorities. So they will complete the transaction within fraction of seconds. the duty of payment gateways for example i have a e-commerce store i need a payment support system then you can approach to bill desk or you may approach to cc avenues or you may approach to google checkout they will provide a smooth payment system to you for your bank account to from customer bank account to your bank account you can get the funds or you can make the payments
by using payment gateways they are the mediators they are the intermediate service providers okay then card associations for example you have a bank you are started a private bank with your uh, members you are, you are started a private bank so to issue banks to the customers we need to take authorization we need to take permission from the card association so card so here we have visa mastro mastercard american express these are the card providers for example sbi is issuing cards through visa mastercard and mastro card like that we need to take the permission we need to get the support from these card associations right then loyalty card so loyalty card means for example if you go for reliance digital they will provide some cards so in that card they will mention total your past purchase history and your reward points similarly best price flip card uh, spencer like that we have some shopping uh, stores they will provide cards that cards may used for your previous transaction details your reward points so these they are called as loyalty cards so here payment processors are banks gateways and card associations so if you want to develop a complete e-commerce website compulsory you need to take a support from these parties then only we can create a interactive website for our business right now when you are using these apps what things we need to follow so what we need to do what we don't do so card uses guidelines see when you are using e wallets when you are using cards what things we need to do keep the card at a safe place when you are using card we need to keep that card at safe place so it won't be shown to others note down the card details in safe and secure so don't write your card your pin number or other numbers on card or don't write in a slip and don't put in your pocket sign on the back side of the card here you can see here you need to put a sign inform the bank if the card is lost or stolen so when you are lost your card immediately you need to inform to the bank so there we have a toll free number by using toll free number we need to contact the bank authorities and block your card change the pin number assigned by the bank for secure usage so at the very first time the pin number is provided by bank to you so what we need to do we need to change that pin number and frequently for every two months or three months we need to change the pin number not only for card for payment apps for e wallets whatever it may be frequently what we need to do for every three months or for every two months we need to change the pin number and use pin number which is not guessable for example don't take pin number like one two three four or double one double two like that don't take repeated numbers uh, so we need to use a number which is in complex manner which has high security which is not guessable that number we need to put as a pin number okay. see don't allow your card to be used by any other unauthorized individual for example when we are visiting hotels to make the payment what we will do just we will give the card to waiter he may go and he will swipe the card like that don't do the practice like that so in front of you only you need to swipe the card don't allow others to use your card and do not write pin number on the card for security reason so don't write any pin number any other details on the card do not share card like the pin cvv card expiry date etc to anywhere anyone so need so don't share cvv number i said credit card verification value or we can say card verification value in the uh, in the case of debit card so don't share that number or don't share pin number and don't share your card number expiry date to others because if you share that they may use they may misuse your card and similarly when you are using payment apps in your phone so compulsory you need to maintain a code security authentication means uh, you need to put a screen pattern lock or any security lock to your mobile to open your mobile and similarly for apps you need to put a password and you need to hide the apps 
whenever you require you need to put the payment apps in a secured folder so whenever you want to open that apps so open the secured folder then only you can make the transaction so that type of security we need to follow while you are installing your this payment apps in your mobile legal issues so what are the legal issues we have by using e payment systems so here we have two types of issues the impact of e cash and taxation and business issues so these two are the legal issues we have with the this electronic payment systems right so e cash and taxation compulsory whatever the transaction we are doing so here we have two side effect one is whatever the transaction we are doing compulsory that will be noted and there is a transparency there is a transparency in the transaction because everything is digital so everything is noted everything is record maintained and another one is business issues means the transferring funds from one business to another business may lead some time to for settlement of transactions these are the legal issues and advantages risks in e payment systems so what are the advantages we have with e payment systems one is increase efficiency and productivity manage cash flow easily improve safety and control saves money less paperwork low commission eliminate the risk associated with lost stolen or misdirected checks so these are the benefits of eps electronic payment system see increase efficiency and productivity see i said just now every transaction is recorded okay electronically every transaction whatever the cash inflows whatever the cash outflows everything of things are recorded in your computer or in your mobile right so there is a no need of other inspection for example in manual case when cash you need to count the cash when you are giving to somebody you need to write in your book uh, in your cash book so here if you forgot by using a bank statement also you can know for what purpose you made payment for what purpose you have received amount from whom you are received amount everything is noted manage cash flow easily so previously we have to see for example you want to make a payment you need to give a check or you need to visit that store physically and make the payment similarly when you when you need to get money So we need to send a collection agent to that particular shop. Then we need to collect the money. He has to give that money to your shop. So this is a procedure we have it traditionally, but nowadays no need. Simply by sitting in the shop, they will transfer the funds to your account. That is what manage cash flows easily, improve safety and control. See, there there is no need of physical carrying of money. So automatically it will provide safety and control. Saves the money. No need of other costs like traveling costs to collect the money. and less paperwork no need to maintain the bills everything means bills means for example he has paid first installment second installment third installment like that no need to main, maintain the transaction on papers i no commissions eliminate the risk associated with the checks so these are the benefits we have with the eps and we have some risks okay some pitfalls also one is restrictions limit regarding maximum amount number of transactions see Uh, one is, for example, if you want to withdraw the money from ATM machine, or if you want to transfer the money, there is a limit. For example, if you want to make the payment through Google Pay or any other wallets, there is a limit. You may transfer the money below one lakh. When you want to withdraw the money from ATM machine, you may make withdraw only ten thousand at a time for a transaction. Like that, we have some restrictions in ePay. in electronic payment systems but in manual no restrictions you can pay up to your wish and the risk of being hacked unsecured platform for example when you are using these payment systems these apps or when you are using net banking or internet banking any unsecured platforms for example in railway station you are getting free wifi so by using that free wifi when you are when you are making the transaction there is a chance to hack your information your sensitive information so 
don't use public systems for example like internet caves or public computers to make the transaction if you make the transaction through that public system there is a chance of hacking your sensitive data then problem of transferring money between different payment systems depends on application for example sometimes there is a problem of uh, for example if you are using a app which uh, like you know app you need to transfer the money to other bank account sometimes there is a issue between these two applications uh, for example you are using google pay sometimes there is a uh, problem with your bank account to google pay the linkage sometimes we may get some technical problems linkage problems so it is not all the time sometimes then e currency exchange uh, and lack of anonymity access information to intelligence agency uh, ne necessity of internet access so if you want to make the transaction compulsory you require internet without internet connection we can't perform the transaction the risk from mistakes and disputes see sometimes uh, in overlook we may enter account number wrongly or account name or ifsc code at that time instead of one person the amount goes to another person the type of risk we have with the electronic payment system managing information privacy so information privacy means we are disclosing every information to the app some apps may be trusted some apps may not be trusted so don't use untrusted apps when you are using when you are making a payment compulsory you need to do the payment so yes trusted app only managing credit risk uh, so this is also one of the problem for example uh, when you are making a payment for example i am having a bank account in a private bank uh, so with, it is a small private bank. So I, I need to, I, I made a transaction with the private bank and it has to make the payment to merchant uh, who is having a public bank. Sometimes this private bank may unable to make the payment, unable to make the settlement from this bank to that bank. The type of credit risk we have with the electronic payment systems. So these are the various risks associated with the electronic payment systems right so these things we have covered in the today's class and the next class that is on 2021 so we are going to discuss the last block that is electronic data interchange so in electronic data interchange we have concepts of eda what do you mean by electronic data interchange security aspects of e-commerce legal aspects of e-commerce that things we are going means we have three units these three units will complete in two classes, right? Now, just I will give the review of today's class, what we have covered in the today's class. So I'll, I'll give overview of electronic payment systems, what electronic payment systems we have. Just we have 10 minutes of time, nine minutes of time in that I will give the overview. So what we have completed. So electronic payment systems, so in electronic payment systems we are completing the transaction we are making the payments over the network by using electronic devices that we can say electronic payment systems in electronic payment systems we are using credit card this is traditional way the credit card is traditional one but it is also comes under electronic payment system so in credit card when you want to make a transaction through a credit card we require some details one is credit card number credit card expiry date card holder name and cvv number these are mandatory to make a credit card transaction in the case of debit card also we need debit card number we need debit card expiry date debit card cvv number and card holder name so after giving these details in the websites or in apps we may get otp one time password by entering the one time password we can complete the transaction this is in the case of debit card and credit card so smart card nowadays whatever the cards we are getting like debit uh, what that may be debit card that may be credit card that all comes under smart cards and e-money e-money means when you are making the transaction through internet that come that we can say as e-money so in that we have electronic check in electronic check we have party name bank name account number and the payer name amount to be paid so one bank may collect money electronically by using what i said i said two technologies one is micr 
and image mapping cts check truncation system through that systems the <clears throat> bank may collect money from payer bank to payee bank account so eft electronic fund transfer system so here uh, under this we have atms retail payments online e commerce payments so payment systems in india for retail payments means for, for small payments we are using micr ecs eft neft cds scs for the large payments we are using paper based as well as rtgs so before 2010 or, or 2010 we have these rtgs ecs neft micr cards but in 2020 we have so many payment systems right so these are the 10 top payment systems which we are using in india like cards ussd aadhar enabled payment system upi mobile wallets bank prepaid cards point of sale terminals internet banking mobile banking and beam app so these are the those the working system of aadhar enabled beam bharat pure code these are the various payment wallets or applications in india and payment gateways card associations and i said legal issues right this is what today's class we have 6 minutes of time if you have any doubts i will clarify the doubts otherwise we will go for a wind up yes ma do you have any doubt no sir no no sir So on next class we'll discuss last three units that is lost black mark EDI electronic data interchange and in, the, in there we are going to discuss different formats of EDIs what are the benefits we have with EDI and what are the risks we have with EDI so how the business data transmitted over the networks that all the things we are going to discuss in the next two sessions right Thank you, Ma. I have a good day. Thank you, sir.